on the line now. It's you know he could kind of get away with stuff, but he's still so very close in lineage. So that's fair. there was a lot of that going on. But I just yeah. started, like I, I mean started. they could they, they're not as stingent with like him as they are with like William because William could be king next. They could overstep Charles. Right. And they just can't wait to be king. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I just hit record, by the way. I figured I'd catch some of what you were going to say. That's all right. Yeah. Whoa. Wait. Let's do the intro now. La, 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 la. How's your guys' uh, Well, Bass, you've been out in the boat. Is it work? Mm -hmm. Anthony, Ooh. have you been at home? Yep basically the entire time like you just, I've gone out to get food from Safeway which is around the fucking corner so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far out as I've gone that's fair mm -hmm. ready and hello everybody welcome to another episode of the F Word podcast coming to you live from our own self isolations uh, or self quarantine I heard that self isolation means that you are you do have it and you're self isolating because you have it is that correct uh, not uh, necessarily. Yeah, no. Like, technically, we're all self-isolating. Like people who have it have to self-isolate too. But we're like we're all quarantined. We're all quarantined. We're all self-isolating. So okay. I think it's kind of a term for everyone mm -hmm. at this point. It's okay. you know, equality. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I am your host G, and with me again is Vass and Anthony. And uh, I switched out my microphone to this cool little Turtle Beach video game headset mic thing and already i think you guys said it sounds better mm -hmm. last week was super funny so with this zoom thing you can bring it obviously it will record it for us and it'll have it ready but i have to put it through the video for some reason it won't put it directly to audacity anyways so i pulled the audio and at one point during our other one i was like oh i'll just turn up the volume because you guys were mentioning something was off and i was like oh i'm hoping it'll make it better literally made it worse <laughs> oh wow <laughs> from that point on it was just like it was perfect yeah it was crackly and i remember you guys mentioning that i sounded crackly and it sounded a lot more yeah um on the recording it's probably too many connections for what you had set up i like it wasn't maybe. as direct as it could have been maybe I, I mean i really don't know what you had for setup but it just if it was that one mic i knew you probably had to have like a few connections it wasn't just a straight usb or whatever it uh, it wasn't a straight USB. It was into the old Scarlet little box that we used to have that would put the microphones in, and I'd use a splitter. And I've used oh, it. Oh yeah, there you go. But I used it before when I was recording on another guy's podcast, and it didn't happen. So, anyways, I'll test it mm -hmm. out with this. If you guys are saying it sounds good, then I'm good. Um, I talked to Arturo actually yeah. a couple days ago because I had nominated him for that uh, it could, uh, a movie you love based on your name. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that dude's working like crazy hours because Amazon's offered two dollars extra an hour. He said, and mm -hmm. and overtime. So oh, geez. yeah, so it's like double double duty. But he's safe. He said he's been good. They're they're distancing obviously at work. But uh, he was mentioning like at first, obviously it was a little bit off. He's but he's mm -hmm. like and he forgot. He's like, oh wait, now yeah, I know why it sounds the way it does. But he said it was it was good. So if he's cool with it, then I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. yep. How's your guys' week been? Uh, it's been pretty basic. Uh, what have I done? I, I basically was watching a bunch of TV shows, movies. I saw Contagion the other day, which is why I posted about it in the F word. Uh, doing uni shit online. Uh, we don't have a math final, as I texted you guys about. And we're done math this upcoming week, so next week, I guess. And then, yeah, just university's closing down. Everything's going pretty easy for me. Uh, something funny happened this morning. So I was playing GTA for the first time in, like, I'd say over a year with some friends, and we were doing heists. And, like, the heist was going long, so I was playing till like, 2 in the morning, which is, like, stupidly late for me. Like, I go to bed at, like, midnight, which I know is, you know, still late for some people. But uh, I was going to sleep, and then, like, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and hearing, like, my mom yelling to my dad about like some kind of fire and I remember just going back to sleep immediately and I thought it was just a dream and then like an hour ago my mom like mentioned it 
about how like one pair of Sony burns food, the other one tries burning down the house. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Will that actually happen? <laughs> yeah. I thought I was just dreaming it because I was like, there's no way this shit's going on. Because like the alarm was going off because basically he was making some food in the morning. He uh, put it on the oven or whatever, like in the pan to like heat it up and he used like, a shower and then like come back to it. <laughs> and he took too long. Rookie. <laughs> yeah, so the fire alarm went off. <laughs> so I was just, it's just one of those things that was funny because I'm like, holy fuck, that actually happened. Like I mean, if there's an actual fire, I would have been so fucked. Like I just not, I did not give a shit at all. <laughs> you were just like, I'll, I'll, I'll let future Anthony, I'll let tomorrow Anthony deal with it. <laughs> This sounds like a problem for future Anthony. <laughs> but yeah, no. Oh, man. I've been like going outside to do homework or like read shit because like I just miss fresh air. <laughs> and you know, self isolation, man. It's, it's well, tough, but everybody's going to do it. Technically, still go out, but you're. Oh, yeah. My yeah. mother has me staying inside. <laughs> I hear you. Sending you I'm... out for groceries, eh? The, or a sacrificial lamb, as it were. I am. Um... <laughs> I went to Vass. How's your week? Sorry, before I go. Uh, well, I don't, I've been working. It's uh, they got us on a different schedule, so it's like five days on, five days off. So I'm on my on week. So it's kind of business as usual ish, but yeah, next week will be sitting doing nothing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. How about you? Is that still a funeral or funeral home? Yes. Yeah. Funeral home. So that's uh, you guys one are thing that likely won't change. <laughs> so mm-hmm. if anything, we might get more busy, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. as of now, it's just kind of steady status quo. Uh, uh, you know, people can't necessarily do like full blown services like they normally did. So it's just kind of you take it as it comes. Yeah, it's it's a uh, I don't know. That's crazy. Uh, they sent out a list. There's like 19. 19 things that they consider essential services and obviously you guys are one of them but like memorial companies aren't and the reason i know that is because like with my work i'm in advertising so Mm -hmm. i'm actually still calling people not to talk about advertising but i have to call out to my portfolio and check in on them and stuff Mm -hmm. and like yeah yeah yeah. most of them are obviously not doing well and not only that like they've had to close like it hasn't even been like a we obviously we want to everybody has Mm -hmm. to and uh yeah it's a it's a scary, scary, scary time. And like the, the scary thing is that for a lot of places, it's just starting for us. It's about to hit in a couple of weeks. And I mean, I don't want to turn this into yeah. like, you know, talking about the, the virus, but because everyone's pretty aware of it, but like I've, I have, I have gone past the, um, I've gone past the everything sucks kind of phase, which yes, it does. And I've gone to the acceptance part of it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, just, you know, day by day and, and going like that, which isn't always well, a lot easy, of people, but. like a lot of people, like I agree. Like I posted on my meme page saying like, yeah, no, self-isolation sucks. But like the longer people delay it and like, or like fight against it and keep going to parties and like all this bullshit, yeah. the longer it's going to, like last so just suck it up stay inside so we can yeah. get this over with i mean i i'm like so i'm in a shitty but fortunate state where it's shitty because we live in a condo so we don't have that much space and there's so many people living in this building so mm. it, like mm-hmm. we're kind of in this like relatively like we're in a building that literally has so many people so we're in a hot spot but we're all separated so i don't know like we're being very careful um but yeah. we don't have kids so that's helps mm-hmm. but like i wish we had like a basement or a backyard or something so you mm-hmm. know to, so to get outside we have to go we're not going to the elevator because obviously like maybe someone was in there coughing who knows right so we have to go down the stairs and so the stairs it's like rails and stuff so we have to put gloves on and then go outside but, mm-hmm. you know whole whatever. process it's it's a bit of a process, but you know, compared to other people I'm talking to that have like their kids that they have to deal with, mm. and I know for a fact that there's people in our building that have kids and are living in a condo, so it's like they're doubly fucked, and they don't have their jobs, so it's like I don't know, it's it's crazy just to think about. But uh, yeah, at least you guys have backyards. That's what I guess that's what I was going for. Yeah, no, it's fair yeah. enough. Cause like yeah. If I was kind of stuck in a one floor area, 
with like five people like i know you have two but like it's still suck ass because like you're gonna be stuck in that those so, same two rooms for like probably i'd say at least or around two months i'm thinking because i know china is already getting over corona like they're they closed down all the hospitals because they don't have enough people to actually like put in yeah. the hospitals which is very good yeah. but i think they have the bird flu now so it's like <laughs> they got over one and now they're getting fucked again i think the bird flu well, they're able to combat no i don't know actually they must uh like if there are vaccines already. for bird like i know it's not an issue in china because like bird flu kind of like do they have a vaccine for bird flu it says I, I, i'm looking at the oh there is no vaccine uh, no, but you know what? There's no vaccine or cure for Zika virus. I think we talked about that last week. And so it's like, you know, I mean, who knows? But yeah, there. it seems to be three months and they've been able to get out of it. I don't know. Italy ended up having low death numbers last yesterday, but then mm-hmm. it skyrocketed mm-hmm. again today. So, and then it seems like Spain is next. So whoever's in Spain, uh, just be careful, please. Mm-hmm. I mean, not obviously for me saying please, but just, you know, just be careful because mm. that's the, that's the thing. It's like, okay, we're, we've hit this kind of weird normal period now. It's kind of like the flu itself where you kind of feel off, but then you feel better and then you feel really bad. So like you, it gets worse. So I think right now, like at least where we are, it feels relatively normal and kind of okay in a way. But I mean, I know for us it's coming. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like when, it's like when uh, Lily got the flu because of the soup and Marshall spent all day and he like knew what was going to happen to his life six yeah. months later. And he's like getting his hot wings. He's like, Oh, my last meal. Thank you. <laughs> and like now mm. I don't, I don't think a miracle like Lily being pregnant is going to help this, but you know, it, well, it's you weird. Know, it might maybe uh, the first person with coronavirus said, Hey guys, just kidding. I'm just wow. pregnant. So everybody, it's like a placebo, you know, everybody's like, Oh fuck, we're going to yeah. die. And it's like, Oh, never mind. I don't wow. think that's going to happen, actually. <laughs> I think out of all well, the things you know, that could happen. We're just, I'm just saying, you cannot rule it out. Like, there is, like, no uh, ma- if it's, even if it's a 0.01% possibility, that's still a possibility. Is this so like the odds a, of you dying from a cow are low, but they're never zero. Fair. But I will, uh, you know what the real, you know what's an interesting statistic? Um, and we'll actually get to, like, some movie news eventually. Uh, is that, like, I think they said that uh, deaths because of vehicle accidents will be down substantially because there's oh, less people on the roads. Right. Yeah. But anyways. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get into it because I think we've been already been going for about 10 minutes on some really shitty stuff. I mean, Tokyo 21, the Olympics postponed, obviously. Uh, yeah. And I, I didn't fucking know that Kenny Rogers died. <laughs> which was so crazy and it's not crazy because i'm a huge fan it's crazy because he's like culturally he's been around forever Mm, yeah like that's so like that's so wild that he died because you don't even think about him and then the coronavirus or just died in general i I, he just died of old age he was like in his 80s yeah he and then now the coronavirus is postponing his public memorial um yeah so the the biggest thing, like for me, the, like the gambler is the one that I know the most. Okay, the song with you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, mm-hmm. know when to run. That is yeah. like the that's like every that's like a saying in, in the culture. Everybody knows that saying. Many be, or few people know where it's from, but he's definitely the guy that brought us that one. And not just for poker, obviously, it's a life thing. So yeah, crazy. Crazy, 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 Swayze. Um, Chris Catan. Oh, so I watched this whole week. I want to know what you guys were watching because this week I've watched. This is this is my rotation of of movies. So as of Sunday, we watched a movie called Double Jeopardy, which was okay. Uh, it's a like a '90s show. Then I watched The Score, which is also which is like I think '93 with Robert De Niro and Edward Norton. And then I watched The Firm which was also a late 90s or an early 90s with Tom Cruise. I think I switched them. Anyways, and then I watched Awesome Powers and Whiplash. And yeah, those have been like, I've been watching a whole wide range of movies. 
And so that's kind of been my list this week that we've actually sat and watched um, exclusively. And then tonight we're watching that weird documentary with the tiger guy. See, I was thinking about doing a list and I should do a list because I know I'm watching a shit ton. Like this past week in terms of movies, the ones I remember at least I saw Waited or Waiting, sorry, mm-hmm. that you told me to watch last week. I like that a lot. I saw Contagion. I f- like fully watched uh, Night at the Roxbury because I only saw the second half with my parents because no. I was watching uh, Kitchen Nightmares. Mm. I think that's it for movies, but I'm also, I binge watched all of My Hero Academia's fourth season. Uh, right now it's getting delayed due to the coronavirus. So like the last three episodes are getting pushed back. Mm-hmm. I'm finishing One Punch Man, watching fucking How I Met Your Mother again, Kitchen Nightmares. And that's, I think that lists all my binge watching for this week. But it's, it's a nice time to catch up on all the shows and movies you haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Vast. So enjoying it. Uh, I got through Better Call Saul. Four seasons. Actually, fairly short, surprisingly. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer than that. And they have one last season, right? Like the fifth season? I think so. Like, I think we're getting really close to the events of Breaking Bad, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um, Or at least where the Saul Goodman that we know. Um, So maybe there's not much to say. Because it's all about him becoming Saul Goodman. Um, So that was really good. I finished Titans. That ended up being awesome in the end oh, like it, I, need I don't know why Titans. it took me a bit to get into it again but just obviously with having so much time you just th- this is where binging is has become what it's become because like you get to enjoy it and fully get into it and you need to get through like that episode and a half hump and then after that you're taking off like you'll finish no problem uh within a day or two um but uh i don't want to you haven't seen it yet anthony oh uh, i've followed the second season like i know so you know uh, what comes up. yeah okay so nightwing that was badass mm-hmm. like every i this is why i do like titans quite a bit because it's it's that dark gritty side of the of the dc that we and, don't get to see usually yeah, exactly <laughs> like they swear the blood the guts like all that kind of stuff like it's it's up there and it's very well done overall but yeah the nightwing suit is so badass like it's amazing and i just can't wait for the next season whatever they come up with so that'll be really cool which they've already hinted obviously and uh yeah uh titans what else did i watch i got through oh ragnarok i finished that that uh mm-hmm. norwegian I saw that was on netflix too. And it is on netflix yeah it was very well done and i'm i'm a huge fan of north Miso- north uh, norse mythology and they did very good with it. I was just like, I can't believe they ended it on such a cliffhanger, though. Like, it's, it was good, though. I'm not it was a good spoil ending. It for anyone that wants to watch it, but oh, it was very well done. I can't believe, yeah, exactly. Uh, like Norse mythology copied Marvel so blatantly. Like, what the fuck is that bullshit? Oh, yeah, so that's what <laughs> well, it's funny. So, so this... is like Ragnarok. Go ahead. Go I was ahead. gonna ask. Is Ragnarok like actually a series? Like, are they gonna try and do a second oh, season, or was it just like a? This is gonna oh, definitely okay. kick off. Uh... I don't know how many seasons they could really get out of it. It's, it's a kind of isolated story, I think, uh, unless they find a way to branch it off. But just a synopsis is essentially that um, uh, you got these characters that are kind of the bad guys, and uh, you end up finding out they're the titans of the – or the, sorry, the giants. They're giants, yeah. The giants of uh, Jotunheim. Yeah, and – they were always against the gods and in essence they were considered the bad guys and and then you have the gods so there's kind of uh, it's kind of a reincarnation it's kind of something like that and so hold on so but you explain it better yeah i was just gonna say like so the area that they're in it's called ada and that area is the last area in the the norwegian like world that was still abiding by the gods themselves so it was kind of like a bridge between the Aesir gods and the people before um i think catholicism or christianity kind of took over because it was taking over everywhere so this was kind of like this this jump off point uh for the area that place does exist in like the myth but you know obviously it doesn't exist in real life and so this is the giants and the Aesir gods always had fights and they always hated each other and so there's giants living on earth and have been controlling things from here and so 
what Bass is like and, and what they're what the thing is showing is that okay, now it's gonna come back to it again. And obviously those events spark Ragnarok, which is always happening. Like Ragnarok has happened, will happen, and is happening at like it's this weird kind of cool time thing. So that, that. Yeah. Is it like anywhere close to like did did Thor Ragnarok have any Thing like so far, were you seeing like anything close to the events or Ragnarok is the destruction of the world? Mm -hmm. Um, in if you were to look at the actual mythology itself, it's like it kicks off again, battle between the Aesir gods and the giants, and it's uh, when Skull and Hati they eat the sun and the moon, like when they they chase it, and that's when it Mm -hmm. happens, and the whole world starts over again. But it's always constantly happening, and it's always happened, and it's like. Yeah, it's this weird thing. The Ragnarok, the, the in in Marvel, just took liberties with just the destruction of Asgard. Yeah. Whereas Ragnarok is actually the destruction of like everything. The world. Yeah. So it's yeah. but again, it's it's the destruction slash the reset. It is the it is the chaos and it is the beginning of the order mm-hmm. of it. So, mm-hmm. um, I actually really I was looking through um some stuff on god of war which is going to be our next topic but like they did really good with the lore on how things happened um yeah. in in the game uh if you have a chance to play that game that that does really good and then there's yeah. a book from neil gaiman that is also um supposedly very very mm-hmm. good in just in mythology itself norse mythology is crazy like it's so oh, cool yeah. <laughs> but yes yeah. ragnarok the show oh, is quite good very good yeah. yeah. And the last thing I got into now during this is I started Man in the High Castle, which is Ooh, yeah. very good. Um, and I was telling G already that it's just a little bit of a slow burn. You kind of got to you gotta really pay attention to what's going on. And um, it's been run on run since 2015, I found out. And it's on, it has six seasons on Prime. And it's basically what – it's a world where – Germany and Japan won World War Two, and uh, Germany took over half of the states, and they're part of like the American Reich, uh, basically the Reich nation. And then Pacific states is uh, what Japan took over, and you follow these characters both on the German side, Jap- Japanese side, and then people in the middle who the Americans left over, I guess, or the next gen that got not they're not enslaved. But they just had to adhere to the, all the all the rules of where they live. So it's yeah. either they live in the Pacific states and follow the Japanese customs, or they live in the Reich uh, states and they follow Germany's customs. Um, but uh, the premise is basically there's these propaganda videos of showing a world where the opposite happened, which is what we know. And this, you know, obviously the. Germany lost the war in Japan as well. And so, but these, uh, these films are, they're what this resistance workers, resistance people are after and stuff like that. So it's, it's very good. I really love the premise of it. It's very interesting. And I'm sure everyone's thought of it. You know, what if Germany had won the war? And I mean, there's been documentaries that have stated that because there's always a plan in place. Like Hitler had a massive plan to take over all the world, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and create this uh, massive, massive uh, Aryan and the, you know, the next Reich and all that kind of stuff. So it's very interesting. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a bit of a slow burn. You got to get the character development. Uh, I just am starting the second season now. So it should be interesting how it develops. How many seasons but are there? Six so far. And I'm not sure if it's done after six or if there's more to come. Obviously it'll be on hold regardless, but um, there, there's, obviously going to be an end at some point because it, it follows it's it's based off some books that were already created so I, I i don't know how many books there are and if they coincide with the seasons or what the deal is but there's definitely an end point of course so it's nice it's good another thing i want to ask you guys because you're talking about titans uh mm. have you guys heard of or seen the animated uh what do you call it the animated show harley quinn mm-hmm I haven't. TV yeah, that's the, so it's uh, it was announced back at like Comic Con. I forget, like it was like either last year or the year before, and it was basically to combat Fox's animated Deadpool, but Deadpool obviously didn't come out. So basically, this is like 
I know you guys don't see watch Rick and Morty, but this is like Rick and Morty crossed over with DC, and it's like surprisingly actually really fucking funny. Like it's dark humor, like there's violence, you know, swears, f bombs, all this like shit, with Harley Quinn and like Batman and all these other Gotham characters. And the second season comes out, uh, like beginning of April. So in like, I guess yeah, I'm like next week, I think. Yeah. And it, I don't know if you guys haven't seen. It's like 12 episodes, 20 minutes long a piece. Like, it's actually really fucking... I binged it all in a day. Like, it was so funny. And where is it? Uh, it's on the DC Universe, which I don't think Canada has access to. But, you know, if you're uh, willing to go to the high seas, I'm sure you could find it quite easily. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. Actually, there was something I was going to add on to... Fuck, I forgot now. God damn it, I forgot. I, I actually am enjoying this because I get the I have the laptop in front of me and I can actually look up stuff that we're we're talking mm. about. Um, fuck, what was Vass talking about before? Man of the High Castle. Talking about Ragnarok, I think. No, Man of the, of the High Castle. Castle. I've heard of it. Now that you mention it, I have heard of it. Um, there was something about that, but now I forget. Now I'm totally gone. Okay, um, let's go into. I mentioned the God of War thing. Uh, God of War is a new comic book coming out, or there is a new comic book coming out called uh, mm-hmm. God of War Fallen God, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So this one is after number three and into God of War 4. This is after, yeah. like, what is this? Uh, there's a the large time gap in 2018's, or of God of War 3 and 2018's God of War, uh, and it's called a new series called Fallen God, which is comics. Um this looks pretty awesome. Like everything about this, I'm like, I really, yeah. really want to know that because that is dope as fuck. He said, "What is this? The dark horse. The dark horse's official solicitation teases God of War: Fallen God follows Kratos after conquering Zeus and thwarting Athena, believing himself to be finally free of the bondage. He sets sail for the desert in an attempt to distance himself from his home and his shame, only to find his rage and guilt follow close behind. Kratos' rage against that one, the one foe that." has proven to be unconquerable himself. But a war against oneself is unwinnable and only invites madness. That's great. That's a great synopsis. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm excited so, for that. I know they, they announced a new God of War, correct? Like the fifth, is it the fifth one that's coming out next? Or the sixth yeah. one? It'll be like the so, sequel is to it, this new one. Yeah, so this is basically a prelude to the fifth game. Is that what to, they're saying? Are you no, saying pr- prelude to the fourth game? So the the oh, PS4, I see. yeah, the PS4 version is what this is a prelude to. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, which hopefully will let us know how he ended up uh, yeah. getting to the north side of things. Because you briefly get hinted of how he be- he got into the um, into the Norse world. I guess you can say Norse mythology world versus the Greek. I mean, he just traveled to a different place i guess you could say or maybe it's a whole different realm it depends on the theory yeah it depends on the theory because there's theories that are tying kratos to um another person altogether that already existed but again this is the weird the cool thing Mm -hmm. and the weird thing about and the mind-bending thing about uh north mythology especially what they've developed is that what is to come what has happened and what is already happening are all happening at the same time and it's so cool and it's so weird like in the game there's a character named Tyr who is who has uh, been actually a bridge and that people people loved this guy okay he's the god of war in Norse mythology mm-hmm. but people loved him and he's traveled between different realms to all different yeah. areas and so there is a theory that maybe Kratos is Tyr but it doesn't make sense because everyone loves him where everyone fears Kratos but he is the one so far that yeah. has been jumping between the two so there's so much there that they could do and and like yeah there, there's there's a lot there and again it's one of those things where you never know at what point you're at because there is another theory that um jormund gunder who is the world snake the world serpent that mm-hmm. fights thor mm-hmm. is actually kratos and so oh. that's why he knows atreus but in the books like in the in the mythology, Jormungandr is actually a son of Loki, uh, like right. the, like the real Loki. Where this one, it's like, oh, he seems to then be the father of a Loki. Anyways, it's it's very there's so yeah. many 
uh, things that they obviously they're taking their liberties. Yeah, it's all theories at the end of the day. That yeah, interesting. Because he knows the thing is because uh, Atreus is able to talk to him, and and he recognizes he... the boy in a way, right? Yeah, but that's kind of alluding to. You play the game, right, Anthony? Uh, I have not beaten it. Like I remember, I I, I gave it to someone. Yeah, these are all. But these are all away. like these aren't legit like things. These are just theories people have. Yeah, no, oh, it's fine. Like, I'm not gonna get mad. The game's been out for like two <laughs> years, long time. Yeah, it's my it is your own time. fault, damn it. Yeah, yeah. yeah anyways, um, let's get into some office news because this was super interesting and mm -hmm. really annoying. So first of all, three days ago, the office turned 15, which is cool mm -hmm. and crazy. 15 only. Huh? Yeah, and then the other thing is now there's new reports that. Uh, Steve Carell actually wanted to be on for another couple seasons, but NBC mm -hmm. royally screwed up. And it yep, was, basically. and the crew said that he was a complete asinine reason for them not getting him back. Like that's the word. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm on line right now and everything's saying the asinine reason. They're saying it was absolutely asinine. Uh, he didn't want to leave that early, all of that stuff. Um, the office crew blames yeah. NBC for forcing Steve Carell's exit. And it was absolutely asinine, as I said, which is really interesting. Yeah. That's super interesting. Well, Especially I remember I was 15 reading years up later. This. Yeah. Sorry, Anthony, go ahead. So from what I read, uh, uh, basically what his agent said or what the person was saying on behalf of his agent was uh, they had not made a new contract for season seven, I think. And that's the season when he was leaving or whatever mm -hmm. so they had made a new contract for after season seven and uh nbc like seemed to not give a shit if stater went mm -hmm. yeah and like didn't want to leave but like vibe that they didn't care if he was there or not like turned him off to it so he just decided not to uh like redo the what do you call it contract and he just mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. yeah renew and then is what like, i read from ign yeah which is crazy to think because why would you not fight for them? Not the, I don't know if you want to say the main character, but like the most popular character of the show to stay. Well, it's he, just stupid. But the thing is, he is the main character. Like this whole, mm -hmm. the whole thing revolves around him. Um, and, you know, it's through his eyes kind of thing. Or not through his eyes, but like he's, he is definitely, definitely, definitely the main character. But it's just crazy because, mm -hmm. yeah, he's even said, he's like, I don't want to go. I want to, he's like, I want to keep doing it. Um, it also says here, mm -hmm. I'm on Collider.com right now. They were going through regime changes. There was a new person going in in, uh, in the leadership. And then there was people, a guy named uh, Bob Greenblatt was on his way in. And he was not as big a fan of The Office as Randy Cordray, who is the office producer, who is also the Randy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's probably where they got the name, obviously, for the character of Randy Cordray. But... Um, mm -hmm. Hmm. Anyways, yeah, so super big mess, but uh, I th also, there is this thing with The Office where it became super, super popular once Netflix was a big deal, too. Yeah. Like, it, it was popular well, I think back it's then. Netflix is the most popular, or the most, like, streamed show of all time on Netflix. Yeah, yeah like, people liked the show a lot, um, but it wasn't until it got onto Netflix and people started binging it and it's just every single year it gets better and, and like more and more and more people just love it. And I think there was something saying that it was that reason why they kept going with it too, but I'm not hundred percent sure because it was 15 years ago and it was, the would have been, Netflix came out when? When did Netflix come out? Uh, find out. Oh, Netflix, it well, it came out in like, the early like below 2010 mm -hmm. i don't know when it got popular netflix came out no netflix yeah, was, was founded. founded in 97 wow that was a long time ago so yeah and then but then it used to be just a um give us a, we'll give you your movie you give us the movie so that's what happened there mm -hmm. um yeah. but i don't know when the actual streaming thing itself happened either way Still, like, I would say, like, early 2010s, I think, when I was talking about it, or so when then, I was like kind of hearing about Netflix, yeah. So then that kind of makes sense because then that's when more people would have signed on to it and it would have been in like it's it was 15 years, so that was 10 years ago where I actually went off like went crazy, but 
Anyways, mm-hmm. really cool. I also finally figured out what I wanted to say before. You guys mentioned crossover. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, okay. You're mentioning cro- the word. You mentioned the word crossover last time. Oh, with the Harley Quinn thing. That's why. Fuck. I got it. I got it. I got it. So, did you guys see the crossover thing with Westworld? Was it with like a robot? I'm more seeing that pic. I don't no, know if okay. that was a crossover. So have you guys I, I haven't seen Westworld. Okay. Neither so have I. this is this I is saw like the first half of season one. Okay. So a really cool premise. I just haven't gone I just haven't seen it yet. But they did a Game of Thrones crossover, and apparently George R. R. Martin was a huge is like a huge fan of Westworld. And there is this theory going around because they had the creators of the show um mm-hmm. on there and they connected they had Drogon in a room on we- in Westworld <laughs> and then Drogon is and then they said that they were going to send him to an island which connects to Jurassic Park and so mm-hmm. like there's this weird theory going on now that like Game of Thrones didn't actually happen and it was this Westworld simulation deal and they had Drogon and they're sending him to Jurassic Park of some, like I don't know it's this weird crazy fucking over the top story but I just oh, I just remembered it now heck? Yeah. Hmm. That's very cool. I would have to imagine, though, that the crossover would be canon to the TV show only because I assume, you know, George R. R. Martin writing the book wouldn't. I don't no, think, he, I think Westworld's a TV show only. No, no, no he was on Isn't board it? with it. Well, like, he could be on board with it, but like to say, I think the events of the book at least would be that, that I, not it actually happened, but it's just a story in the book. For the TV show, I'd be down because, again, same company. And if George R. R. Martin likes the show, I can't see why not. And if since fans do hate the fucking last season so much, I feel like what do they have to lose? Like the show's already done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Westworld, I, I hear, is like really big and getting better each season. So it's a good well, show from what I've heard. A lot of people like it, but it's like, um, yeah, it's just it, there is actually support though from. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. There it is. Uh, there was actually support from George R. R. Martin because he wanted a crossover of sorts. That's the weird thing. Hmm. Apparently, but, I was looking at this and it said uh, since season one of Westworld, he wanted a crossover. Yeah, which is which is funny. Like, and it looked like just a small kind of thing. I literally just saw a video on YouTube about it, but uh, I just thought that's actually very, very, very cool. Especially like this is the world we live in, where yes, we can do stuff like that, even though now we live in a world that's plagued by a, a p- pandemic but uh, anyways mm-hmm. i just thought that was cool going back to the office stuff i think if like if that is true based on this book that's coming out a i really want to read this book and two that's fucking crazy because that, Op- it's like a tell-all even... from steve carell kind of thing i guess so um is it's it not from, from steve, steve carell, carell? Or is it just it's, like behind the scenes it's it's not from steve carell it's from something else uh, there's an, there's a children's book coming out, but yeah, hold on. Let me, let me look, let me look this up. You guys talk about something else. I'm going to look this up. I don't know what else to talk about. Those I... are coming out tomorrow. That'll be uh, season oh, three. Yes. Oh my God. I have got to catch up so much. At least I have time now. I have to catch up. I'm so, I'm, a, I'm behind two seasons now or us. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Have you guys, uh, I know we've, me and G talked about it cause we had the boat come on. But Vasily, have you heard of Cuphead, the video game? No. So I picked it up and it's a, a platformer and the creators actually live right here locally. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a big Microsoft title. It was originally Microsoft exclusive, but now it's going on to PC. Uh, the character appears as a me costume in Smash Bros. And basically it's a platformer that's like hand drawn to look like a Steamboat Willy cartoon, like in that same style. Okay. And it's insanely fucking hard. Like I've been uh, playing it during quarantine because i finished Link's awakening uh on friday the day after we recorded the podcast Mm -hmm. and like i went to go return it to pick up some other games i got captain toad and cuphead and cuphead is fucking stupidly hard like it makes me want to punch it's a full game full legit game oh yeah it's a full it's like it's an indie Hmm. game uh it's i think it has three worlds like it's not a long in-depth game but it's just basically intense boss fights one after another and it's like beautiful game Mm -hmm. but it fucking pisses me off so you, much you actually die a thousand times like uh ethan had it has it played it mm. and he's like 
it literally told him he died close to a thousand times. Like it gave, wow. it gives you your number. Like you get so royally black. The book, by the way, is called The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest Sitcom of the 2000s. And so the reason why this uh, information uh, is coming out now is because the book just yeah. came out. It came out March, okay. 20, March 24th, so two days ago. I'm getting this book. Oh, shit. Yeah. So Andy Green. That's good publicity. For sure. Yeah. But uh, that was the book. Yes, Cuphead, I haven't played yet. I think that game will frustrate me too much. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not nice. I'm. Um, oh, you, should check, you should check it out with Sealy. This like the artwork is so nice. Like holy fuck. Yeah. Um, get up right now. What was I gonna say? I forget now. Apparently, Tom Hanks. And I'm going back to some coronavirus stuff. Tom Hanks is feeling better, and I think Idris Elba said he's feeling better too. So they are on mm-hmm. the mend, which is good. Um, Tormund, got it. Oh, Game mm-hmm. of Thrones, yep. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, okay. There was, what else, what other news did I have? I had a bunch of stuff. There's lots. There's lots of stuff. Rosario Dawson and Kyle Reese. So Rosario Dawson is going to be in Mandalorian 2. Um, season 2, sorry. Mm-hmm. And what was the character's name again? I completely I forgot now. God damn it. And Dawson and Mandalorian. I sent this to you, Anthony. You knew about this. No? Yeah, I did. Uh, playing Ahsoka. Oh my god, say something, man. <laughs> I'm like sitting here like an idiot. Yeah, she's going to be playing Ahsoka. I was, looking, I was awesome. looking for news. I'm sorry. Fuck. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, I'm super stoked. You know who I wish Rosario Dawson would play? Uh, I think she'd be a great She-Hulk. I, I really I'm still like on the Alison Brie like train for She Hulk because I feel like if they want a type like her, like I love yeah. Alison Brie, but yeah, yeah, I, I like I'm a huge, huge fan of Rosario Dawson, but then it wouldn't make sense because if they if the um if the Defenders and all that is canon, well, she is Night Nurse, so her being Night Nurse doesn't necessarily work well if the MCU and the this I don't know the not MCU is uh mm-hmm. is canon but uh no she's gonna be on there that's sweet and also the guy who played kyle reese in terminator is mm. also supposedly going to be in term in mandalorian season two okay. which i think is pretty cool i don't know to what to uh, i don't know to what capacity maybe a bad guy but um yeah i think that's um that's pretty well, cool. we're going to find out a lot about Mandalorian Season 2 coming up like extremely quickly because if it's still Michael on Bean. track to release this year, mm-hmm. which I assume it would be because they're just working on like post-production, so they can all do that from their own homes. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm excited because I apparently Clone Wars, because talking to my, Star, my friend who's like a huge Star Wars nerd, and he's saying that the Clone Wars is close to like uh, catching up to where I think – episode three is and it's going to show the mandalore war where you know darth maul is like the lord of mandalore i think that's the planet's name and it shows like how the black saber i think or dark saber gets like you know free and someone else picks it up cool so it's going to fill in a lot of holes from mandalorian which is going to be hyped to see i don't watch clone wars but i'll follow it and just kind of see what's going on because i'm already too deep and there's like eight seasons and i want to watch that but right Oh, that'll be sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, so that was that one. Uh, Childish Gambino came out with a new album. It's called oh. Three Three Fifteen Twenty, which vindicates me. Okay, because Vass, you gave me shit for calling one of our episode titles just the date, and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't think that's really good. And Child, yeah, fucking Childish Gambino does it, and it's cool. I mean, so? yeah, obviously. I'm just saying. I think it's it's a cool tactic to use. No, no, nothing. I yeah. watch. I I listened to the album. I, I haven't listened to it yet. I, well, I don't know. Oh, I didn't. I don't know. Like a lot of it. Like there was one song I liked, but other than that, it was like pretty mediocre to me. I'm not a big Childish Gambino fan, like you are. Like I do like a lot of his work, but I'm not like a diehard like I am for Eminem. But I just, I don't know. There's one song I really liked, but it just wasn't my kind of music, I think. Like, it was really, really heavy on, like, auto-tune. Like, not, like, of him singing, just, like, that was the vibe of the album. It wasn't just, like, him singing. It was just a lot of these weird kind of 
sounds but I, I don't know i think it was like a good vibe album but it just wasn't my music that i just listened to on an everyday basis yeah so i was talking to Ethan who listened to it and he was the one that told me that it came out and he was saying it's very very vibey um and, which i'm kind of excited for i don't think it'll yeah he says it definitely doesn't trump awaken my love which i like i love i adore that album um not that it means anything but i bought it on vinyl because the cover is so sweet like it's just so awesome uh, and <laughs> I mean that, yeah, that album front to back, I just really, really like, um, but uh, he's like, a lot of people are saying this is his best project. I'm like, I, again, I haven't mm. listened to it, so I'm not sure, but he did also mention to me that maybe it just run... went over my head. Well, and, and mm. I mean, I don't know. I haven't liked Kanye West for a long time. And I know a lot of people that think he's just like, he's still like his album, last couple albums have been unbelievable. I'm like, I don't see it. I, I just don't. Yeah. Uh, um, I like Run, the yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what's really cool is Run the Jewels is coming out with a new song with DJ Premier and Greg Nice. It's called Ooh La La. That's coming out tonight, or it came out today, sorry. Oh, and so, and I'm a huge fan of Run the Jewels, so that's sweet. Uh, Michael Bean is the guy that played Kyle Reese in the original Terminator. That's mm -hmm. who's going to be in Mandalorian. Sorry, I kind of went off topic as always. Yeah. Um, uh, while we're on music, Joyner Lucas, uh, his album slowly, it's not fully released yet, I noticed, uh, at least right. not on Google Play, but he's got a few tracks out. He did that Will Smith, Will song, yes. basically as a tribute to Will Smith for being um, kind of an inspiration to him. And I think one aspect I actually noticed after is that he's not, there's no, ex no explicit version of it because he doesn't swear in it, which oh. actually is probably the biggest uh, you know, kind of tribute he could do because Will Smith never swore in any of his mo songs ever. Well, of course, that Will was Smith his whole thing, right? Will Smith don't have to cuss in his raps to sell records, but I do, so fuck him and fuck you too. Exactly, but yeah, so I thought it was really well done. Uh, I I'm in this group chat of people that like love music, and they sent me or they sent the joint lucas thing yeah and i'm not actually i'm just like stating what they said apparently eight out of the 18 songs yeah. on the album are already released yeah i don't know if that i don't think that matters to me i'm just i don't know they pointed it out like yeah big was, deal. well the, i i thought so too it's kind of odd that they released only like basically half of the album for some reason i don't know but yeah uh Cool. Uh, yeah, I still haven't listened. I have so much music I haven't listened to, which is weird because I literally do nothing uh, except for I work and I go back on the couch. Um, have you been uh, going into work on time this week or still late? But, oh, yeah. No, I've been on time. Um, ever since last week, I've been on time. I, in fact, like relatively early. Last couple of days, not so much, but uh, like in terms of like work starts at 8.30. Monday, Tuesday this week, I was like ready to go at like before eight and then oh, nice. the, today i was like eight ten uh and yesterday i think was around like eight oh five or something so yeah no um still early still early for sure and actually i've been much more efficient too I'm, i think i'm getting into the groove of working from home i've only left the house like three times i should probably get outside because i am like getting boring but i'm at i'm up to i can now do 25 push-ups in a row without collapsing Ooh. which is yes yeah, 25 more than me yeah because i'm uh i haven't exercised for like two and a half years and so now i'm like getting up and doing air squats i'll do like 20 air squats 20 push-ups 20 sit-ups just basic stuff like that just constantly. so you got the prison routine going on you're locked inside four rooms and a wall or four so. walls and a roof yeah and which, now you're just you know chilling working out yeah yeah exactly um uh yeah i'm gonna go okay i'm gonna put a no i'm actually gonna say it sorry listeners who are like what the fuck is he talking about i was thinking about a couple things two things one yes this is a good opportunity for a lot of people to get exercise and also it's also an opportunity for people that have exercise to get super lazy it could go either way uh i quit smoking it's been almost two weeks for me and or it could be for other people starting to smoke or like binge eating and all that stuff there's been like it's, it's a crazy weird time when like the more i think about the possibilities that an individual can go left and right it's crazy i will say this however uh one of the reasons and i don't know if i mentioned this earlier is that 
did I mention that like we're actually like at least I can speak for the three of us relatively lucky right now, even though like it's super shitty that we're all self quarantined. Have I mentioned that? Mm -hmm. In what respect? Like okay, you have not just the one same page. Okay, so um oh shit, sorry. Okay, um when you think about it, we have running water. At least we do, the three of us. I'm only going to speak to the three of us, okay? Uh, we have running water. Mm-hmm. We have we have internet. We have Wi-Fi. Uh, so far, we have some type of a job that's bringing in some type of money. Uh, we have mm-hmm. roofs over mm-hmm. our heads. We have families that live close to us in the event that mm-hmm. something happens. Um, like, in terms of what could possibly happen at least in some a case like this that people are actually living right now i'm more and more i keep thinking like okay like it's fine it's fine which is one of those things that really annoys me when people are like oh be super grateful and i'm not saying that i'm grateful i'm just really looking at this from the side of like this could be a whole lot worse because i know last week i was super depressed and now i'm i'm at a thing of like you know what i'm doing push-ups because i don't want to get fat and I have that ability. I could go outside and run, okay? I'm still recording our podcast over the internet because we have that ability where there's other people that do not even have a roof over their heads. Or if they do, they're at risk of getting this virus and not getting the help they need. Or they just never had running water, so this is even worse for them. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really crazy. I'm, I know I took a, a, a turn, but it's just something that I just thought of. Not just thought of, but I thought I'd bring up. No, I've been thinking about that too. Like just the fact that uh, some people, because I, I remember seeing a meme. It was like you know you have to stay at home, isolated. Like people that come from like messed up families, and it was like a sad face, which is like yeah, funny to laugh, but it's also like oh yeah, I kind of that kind of would fucking suck. Uh, but no, it's like a good thing to stay just grateful and just like thank people for what you have, rather than kind of like. Like, I don't know, not to get too religious, but when I pray, like, I always make it a habit to not ask for things, but, like, thank God for things, you know. So, like, in times like this, it's always nice to remember to be thankful for what you have. I know it does suck. We're stuck inside. But, again, like, I'm watching a bunch of TV shows, playing games, and doing homework. Like, it's not that hard of a life. Like, it sucks that I'm inside, but I'm doing things that are fun. I'm keeping myself entertained. It's not all that bad. Mm -hmm. And in the words of Hulk from Endgame, it's like I was made for this. Yeah, in a weird, in a weird way. I don't know, like, and I'm not, I'm not overly religious as I used to be. And like, I know that there's going to be people out there who are not religious at all, like they're straight up atheists, and they're like, "Well, your God brought this pandemic," and it's like, listen, no. I mean, you could think that if you want, but no, some guy who ate a bat caused this thing. Okay biology caused this pandemic okay and then there there's i don't know it's times like these where i'm like it's very interesting because um like i know from like my mom she grew up having one plate of food for four people always and my grandmother still lives in the same house that they grew up in and it's not even a house it is it is at best a shack still in terms of its size Mm -hmm. and she still lives there and like i don't know my mom's a very optimistic person which like makes me feel like shit because I'm not. And it's like, she, I don't know how she's always optimistic about shit, but she's just like, no, it's fine. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. And all that stuff. And I'm like, all right, like you're, 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 you've got this on lockdown. I'm, I'm spiraling and she has this on lockdown. On lockdown. Excellent. I know. Yeah. Forced upon, but it works. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Hey, there you go. I don't know. Vast, do you have anything? You don't have to. No, I'm just taking it all in right now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Just vibing. Um, take, yeah, just taking this little kind of, uh, we're just going to slow it down for everybody listening and uh, really reflect. Um, Wonder Woman is indefinitely postponed, obviously. I'm curious, out of all these movies, like you'd think that they would just postpone all of them and maybe have people like stream it but you have to pay like you'd have to pay like a a ten dollar ticket or something to be able to do it and then like everybody can just watch this movie i think people would still do it here's the thing though right so 
from my perspective as a man who regularly streams things, I likely would not. I would likely just watch it, uh, not legally. Right. Like, even though it is shitty, because I like supporting them, like, and when I can, like, you know, I don't stream things illegally if I can stream it legally. Like, there's always that thing. Like, I even read uh, manga through Shonen Jump, which is, like, the company, because they have an online thing, because I like supporting them and not just reading it off some other website. But, like, for, like, these big movies, like, especially for the ones right now, like, Invisible Man and shit, like, and, like, uh, outward is it outward i think yeah outward the pixar one mm. like wanting you to pay like 20 bucks to watch it it's like i'm good i know outward is coming to disney plus april 1st uh, i already saw it but for people who haven't like april 1st and disney plus if you have it good time to fucking get use out of disney plus since mandalorian ended but i don't know vasili since you're an honest man would you pay ten dollars to watch uh, wonder woman 84 or would you just try and find it online uh given the current circumstances i'd probably consider because like realistically when you find uh some of these videos let's say in non-legal forms you don't get the best and full quality you should get Mm -hmm. so there's a part of me that would want the full experience the blu-ray 4k all that jazz so i'd consider paying for something like that if it's like exclusively only through those means i'd consider it for sure (laughs) <laughs> See, I look at it from this. Oh, I would have geez. gone. I would have gone to pay money for it. So if I was going to go pay fifteen bucks plus my popcorn, it'd be like twenty, twenty-five bucks. If they were oh, going to yeah. offer it, it'd be like, well, I was going to pay for it anyways. So yeah, if it was a movie that I wasn't going to pay for, then no, I'm not going to. So mm-hmm. this is where it's like an opportunity, f- maybe for them to look at, like, okay, well, you know, something like Wonder Woman, which is a pretty big deal we can have people pay money for it, you know, and we would get that. Maybe they would have, maybe it would be 20 bucks because they have to set up a deal, like a similar deal that they have for like with the theaters themselves, where there's a cut that goes to the company. There's a cut that goes to the theater itself, whatever. Right. But Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing that I'd look at with like, let's say mobile games where it's like, if I was going to pay, I was going to pay 50, 60, 70 bucks for a regular game anyways. And yeah. so I'll invest only the amount of that. I'd only spend maybe 60 bucks, you know? Uh, again, same with this case. I was going to go to the theaters, pay the money to see it. So if it's available for 10 bucks for me to watch it at home, then I'll watch it at home. Yeah. Yeah, it's just me. Well, I already work at the movie theater. I do my dues. I'm good to go. <laughs> Very noble of you two. Well, it it, it hasn't happened and I haven't done anything yet. So who the hell knows? Um, And this is the last thing I have. No, two things. Um, The Batman composer, like it or not, this is what we're doing. This is a quote from Michael Giacchino, who actually did some stuff for Marvel as well. Um, But he's the composer. He said he felt total freedom to do whatever he wanted um director matt reeves always agreed and their batman is going to be their version that's exciting to me i think people are going to be really surprised and pissed off but at least they're talking about it now and it's like this is our crack at batman we're sticking with it and uh he has continued on to say that i'm not the kind of person that says batman must always be this and it's like why can't he be other things Mm -hmm. so i thought that was really cool i'm excited for the the song itself and the reason is is i realized it today um, I found that music really affects me now more and more the older I get. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm replaying a lot of games only because I'm listening to the soundtracks while I'm at work. And like, I'm, I, I remember them on such a level. Like I was listening to the dark Knight um, uh, theme song and I wanted to, and I ended up watching that. I was, you know, the Spider-Man one, I was listening to the Witcher uh, soundtrack, red dead, all of that. And Which I'm Spider-Man? like, um, the original is the Sam Raimi. And like I like the oh, excellent ones. Yeah, I like the MCU ones, but I really, really like that original score. But I was like, if the composer was, had the few freedom, are good, but Sam Raimi's Spider Man trilogy music, so good. Oh, it is it's great, yeah. But the way I'm thinking, I'm like, if the composer had the freedom to to create what he wanted, that's more often than not, it seems like that's a good thing. Like I'm 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 excited for that. And I, if this song's gonna be awesome. Like if if the soundtrack's gonna be awesome and he had the freedom to do it, then I'm like I like that a lot. So they should bring back Nickelback, is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, 
with Josie I don't Scott. Know how that song goes. Uh, and they say that a hero's a hero if I found a pick you away. Something like that. Exactly. Was that even used in the movie? Sure it was. When? I don't remember. Uh, like, I know it was I from Spider-Man, but I don't, I don't remember it, it being used in the movie. No, I don't know if it was. <laughs> Not in the but. movie. I th- it was on the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was on the uh, soundtrack. Yeah. And uh, I guess we got to, so uh, other Batman stuff. Um, so one, I have some. Oh, oh go ahead. No, please go ahead. Pause. Hello. Did we lose him? Oh my God. Okay. Oh, I'm back. sorry if that was delayed for you. Uh, my Wi-Fi. I don't know what that was, but uh, so basically. Uh, I think it was last week, the box office hit a new record low for being like $0, mm-hmm. which is you no know, shit because everything's closed, which is like the first time in like around 100 years, I think it's been like at zero. I think it was the last like kind of epidemic that they had to shut everything down. Mm-hmm. I don't, I can't find the article I've been looking for, it, but I can't fucking find it. I saw it on Reddit and like, it's just like, I didn't save it. So it's fucking just down the rabbit hole, but I just thought that was pretty interesting and cool just to see, like, it's been so many years since we've actually had to, like, shut down all these not essential businesses, yeah. which I thought was cool. This is true. Yeah. It's, I'm not surprised about that. I'm, I'm curious to see what the, like, what's going to happen. I'm curious how everything, I'm still curious how everything's going to recover. That's all I'm thinking about. Um, okay. Spider-Man Homebound. That's the name now, right? Spider-Man Homebound? I don't think that's official. I think that's still just a rumor. Really? I googled it and I couldn't find any of no, Yeah. No. Okay. I had that in my notes. I'm like, well, shit. Okay. That's a great name, though. I think they'll go with it. It seems like it makes sense, right? Homecoming, far so. from home. And when he's far from home, what happens? He's homebound. Um, and then I, the other I find thing it I got, funny, though, because oh. so many people. Oh, good. No, no, go for the little. It's very hard to, just for everyone listening, it's very hard to like gauge when people are going to talk online. But uh, I, a lot of people are like, I see comments of people commenting, like, oh, why does the third movie have to involve home? Like, why does it have to be something with home? And it's like, well, they've set it up for the past two fucking movies. Mm-hmm. If they have like Spider Man Vengeance Day, it's going to sound fucking stupid, even like past the fact that I just said Spider Man Ven- Vengeance Day. Yeah, basically. But I think Homebound is like a, fucking stellar title and i would not be surprised actually i would be surprised if they didn't use it well the only other thing is that he's in new york right when like he found he goes on his little swinging ride jay jonah exposed or he gets exposed but he is home technically so my question is where like now that i'm thinking about it where is he coming home from well homebound like to say that in the public's perception that he's like so skewed and so far away from like he might have to go on the run he might have to escape uh because again like people are gonna be hunting him i know the rumor right now is that craven is gonna hunt him okay uh whether mm. that's true or not but like even then like i assume he'll have to go somewhere like, he can't just be chilling out in public especially since people know his true identity exactly yeah so maybe that's yeah that, that's a good way to put it then so he's coming not like Spider-Man coming home, but Peter Parker is going to be able to return to normal. Like otherwise, he has to stay Spider-Man. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Vass. Uh, nothing much to add on that one. Okay. 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 Uh, somebody, uh, I read something today. This is the last thing that I have. Promise. I read something today that someone was complaining about, um, or they said that they. They had questions or concerns or they don't like the ending to Batman Begins. And I'm like, okay. Oh. And and they, they said that they didn't like the fact that he just let Ra's al Ghul die. And they felt that that was an ending that wasn't proper for Batman. And because he said that I don't have to save you in, I don't know. It was interesting. And I so I thought I'd bring it up as like a final to topic. You. Or, yeah, I don't, I don't I'm, not, to, I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have I don't, to save you either. Exactly, which goes back to the fact that he saved them the first time, right? And so, mm-hmm. and then I was looking at the chat in that article, and a lot of people were disagreeing with it. I disagree with it, because um, I. But they felt that they, they that Christopher Nolan sabotaged what Batman was 
um, to have a really cool button on an ending or to finish it off really cool. Again, mm -hmm. I disagree with the uh, the writer of that article, uh, but what do you guys think? Yep. No, I, I love that ending. Even that line, like it's one of my, I'd say like most underrated lines in the Dark Knight trilogy. Like it's such a badass line. Yeah. And it's like, it shows growth too, right? Because like he does save him the first time. And then like, I don't remember, because I haven't seen Batman Begins in a while, but like, I think after he saves him, like that's when he burns down the house, right? Yeah. It comes, yeah. So like he learned from his mistake. Like he's not going to kill him. Like he doesn't actually, gen he doesn't kill him. He just doesn't like stop natural selection from taking place but you knew he was yeah, gonna die so it's one of those things going. where it's like yeah, yeah but it's yeah, also like indirectly you know, sorry yeah. ba i cut bass off go ahead it's bass. one of those things where no i was just saying like it's one of those things where he's too dangerous to be left alive and like there's no like he won't stop he's a fanatic at the end of the day he has his and uh, he has his thing and as such they re resurrected his his grand plan in the third installment right so look how dangerous his idea and his uh his beliefs and teachings and stuff are uh so why keep him alive at that point it's like you know what he's got to take that moral bullet to maintain order in his city that's basically what it came down to mm -hmm. like at the end of the day like he was a terrorist so it's kind of yeah. like say if you replaced Rachel, Rachel Ghoul with Osama bin Laden on that train and Batman mm -hmm. didn't save Osama bin Laden Mm -hmm. Like in a real life situation, but then it would be like, oh, fucking Batman, you said you wouldn't kill anyone. Yeah. Like, yeah, nobody would give a shit. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I agree. Like I said, I didn't agree with the person's thing. I was like, because they were referencing, oh, he was going to go kill Chill, but then a lady killed him instead, and he was going to go kill Falcone, but then uh, what's her face slapped him and all that stuff. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, we've talked about this before. He's wrecked shop on people, and people are dead already. Like, if they're or paralyzed at the very mm -hmm. least. Um, and again, to me, I would say that Batman Begins is my favorite of the trilogy as a whole. Uh, even though, again, it's it's really hard to to decide between the two. But that's one of the reasons why. And I thought it was such a great, like, first of all, when he says that, and the thing opens up and his wings open up and then the song does like hits where it's like da, 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 and then like that was such a like unbelievable like it gives me goosebumps every time and hmm. i don't know yeah i just thought it was it was perfect those early like superhero trilogies like spider-man and the dark knight trilogy just had the fucking best music like it's insane so good yeah they did they really did like and, and i mean i love a lot of the music that came out of the mcu but there was something really different about like aside from like the avengers movies themselves had really good theme songs i loved when they got um the new guy uh what was his name i know him because he did he did assassin's creed games he did the but the guy that did the thor theme song um yeah for dark world and uh and then he also did iron man 3 which i which was a great one what the hell's his name but yeah i thought it was a really good theme song which is funny because i mentioned the theme song from captain america the first uh brian tyler that's who it is and brian tyler did the music for uh assassin's creed 4 i remember that because that is a great soundtrack um but in Captain America, it was, I, I just, like, I, I completely didn't realize it, but, like, he had that theme that, dun, 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 when he caught Mjolnir, is the same mm -hmm. one from uh, the first one, which I didn't realize. So when you look back, it's like, oh, snap, they had, like, they grabbed this piece of music from here, and it was perfect. Like, it was, like, his reveal kind of deal at uh, Red Skull. I actually did know that. I remember back uh, when Entertain Facts was not murdered in a fucking alleyway in front of my very yeah. eyes. Uh, I remember posting, I don't know if I posted about that, but I remember like seeing facts on that, how like there was a lot of callbacks. Like, I remember when Captain America first, I, there was a fact on when Captain America like showed up in Infinity War, like it was supposed to be a different song yes. like, through the train scene, yeah, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. It was supposed to be a different song, but one of the cast members just started playing the original Avengers theme and like mm. everyone it, freaked out. It was and Alan Silvestri. A lot of the, like homages. Yeah. But yeah, no, in Endgame, a lot of like the scenes were callbacks. So like when Captain America grabbed that, it was, I think it was this, 
the dialogue was like Red Skull saying you could be a god like before that scene happened, like right before that yeah. scene happened. Yeah. And when he grabbed the hammer, like becoming a god, they play that music again. That was like a callback to that mm. moment. Oh yeah, great. I didn't even think of that either. That's unreal. He literally does become like a god in that moment, like summoning lightning. And he did it like his way. He didn't do it the Red Skull way. That's crazy to think of. That's yeah. so awesome. I, I'm but, you, man. Like I shit on it, but like they have a lot of like a thought into it. They plan it like they planned it out like how I met your mother. Like they put some time into this. They have great payoffs, and I don't know. I I'm excited for the future. I just hope they can. I know we talk about this, but I just hope they can live up to it and like not kind of make it just a cash grab with the same bullshit. Yeah, it's gonna be yep. it's gonna be definitely tough, but we'll see. Yeah, but I was gonna what we were what we got to in this topic is the fact that yeah, like a lot of those theme songs from back then are are pretty unbelievable. Like they're pretty unreal, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and yeah, like, I, I don't know, just every time I think about them, like it gives me goosebumps. That's what I was saying before, like music in general, like the more and more, it's like the more I watch some of these movies over and over again, the more I pay attention to things I didn't before. And then the more I really like it, you know what I mean? Like I, I like, I remember the first time I watched Endgame, I was so engrossed in what was going on with the portal scene that I mm -hmm. kind of didn't really pay attention too much to the theme song. And then after uh, I just was obsessed with it and I would listen to it over and over again. And now it's like that scene is dope as hell, but it is nothing without the music. Oh, the music was hype as fuck. Like, but, but all of them, like, and, and mm -hmm. just in terms of like, if you take some of them, some movies and stuff and you take some of the songs out of them, they're yeah. nothing without it. And I, and I mean, it's kind of a stupid thing to say because it's so obvious that music is such a big, like plays such an important role. Just like yeah. a, a, a taking music away from a scene really helps too. But mm -hmm. yeah, if you take, if you probably take some of the most iconic m movies in the world and you remove those theme songs, like you go, like you go to Gladiator, you go to fucking Austin Powers. You know, I was watching that last night. You like, fuck, it's crazy. Austin, I, I saw you post about that, and I'm, I want to watch the whole trilogy again in quarantine. Like, it's such the music. Like, I remember me and Tino when we were closing up Trifon's Pizza. I'd play like the opening music song where he does the mm -hmm. dance through the city, and we just yep. start like doing the stupidest. Like, if people saw, I'm sure people did see us. Like. It was like nine o'clock in the mall parking lot, but like we must have looked like the biggest meth heads in the world because we were just doing like the stupid hand movements, the shagadelic baby, yeah, like all we were just fucking going off. It's so good, yeah, it's so good. Um, I was watching that. I was going to mention something else now that you mentioned it, but uh, oh yeah, and I watched the night at Roxbury again, which is or, or when I, I what not again. I watched it because yeah, like when I saw your the, your meme and then I saw it on Amazon, I was like, oh, I'm definitely watching this now. Um. Yeah, it's so good. It's still and Austin Powers is still so fucking good. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I got. They make an Austin Powers four, but honestly, as time goes on, I think it's the best that they just kind of leave it where it is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Vass, you got anything? Uh, uh, nothing crazy. No. Well, but there's that Xbox news that they got hacked. You explode. Oh, yeah. Xbox Series X, the graphics source code was stolen and is now being held for ransom at 100 million Jeez. by someone. So it's the source code for the graphics card and stuff like that. So um, it's all the coding and all what it, what it entails. Essentially, it's just what it can put out and all that kind of stuff. So people can copy it and make it their own and don't necessarily need to buy it, I guess. That's why well, I'm not. That we don't well, see. here's the thing: the source code. I, I'm very. I don't know this very well, so for those that do know it, I'm sorry, but I think it's has to do a lot with like all the software behind it and what it can do and how it talks to each other and it, it essentially just runs. It's the coding, right? It's mm -hmm. the coding of what the graphics card can do. Um, so if people can replicate that on their own, well, then all they have to do is let, let's say wipe the slate clean on whatever you have, and then you can create it yourself in its own form. Um, those who have the know-how to work code and understand it and manipulate it, they're laughing. They just save themselves hundreds of dollars. They can essentially create the same capability 
um, maybe even rewrite their current Xbox One to run on this source code. I don't know. I, I think, again, I hope no one quotes me on this and fact check me, but they probably will. But I, I think that in essence is what's going on here is that if that gets released, which is what they're being, uh, you know, is what they're saying here is it's not good. Um, cause half the, half the stuff, I mean, the tech has been released, but the source code is like, it's the, it's the, it's the 12 herbs and spices that KFC uses. You don't know what they actually freaking use, but you know, that's what it's all about. And that's what the source code's all about too. It's the ingredients behind what creates the, the process and power and what it can, how it talks to each other and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it is a like big a deal. legitimate threat though. I'm reading the article you sent and like, they said if the buyers and found, they're just like straight up releasing oh, yeah. it like to the public. And that's the thing. If the right type of people get a, get a hold of this kind of thing, it's not good. Yeah, no. Jeez. Well, That's like I was crazy. gonna say, like if they tried selling it to like Sony or whatever, like uh, they obviously can't because Sony can't use it. But if they release it to the public, Sony can straight up yank that shit. I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, it'll be like back in the day. I don't know if you they're kind of related. Someone had who worked at Coke, I think, went to Pepsi and gave him the recipe. And what did Pepsi do? They turned around and told Coke who it was, <laughs> and got the guy fired. So. PS, the PlayStation would never do, would never copy. It's like, no, we got our own shit. We're good. Well, and uh, they'd probably hand that guy over in a heartbeat if they could. So I'd also say uh, now that the fact that like the console wars are over and like yeah. everyone's playing nicely with each other, I could see like maybe a PS3 days, you know, you know it'd be more viable for them to do that. Like just at least cross, like get the edge on yeah, them. But. The cross platform is, is happening as it is. Like you can play between PC, PS5 or PS4 and Xbox and the Switch on, and Switch on very limited releases. Eventually it's going to come down to what do you like better? Uh, it's like, and they'll still have their exclusives, but I think that'll never end. Yeah, no. I think the forever, the exclusives will always be a thing. So, but most people like, I don't know, I'm fortunate. I have both right now. I have the PS4 and I have the Xbox one. And I honestly haven't touched my Xbox in a very long time. And I actually haven't legitimately, I played, I've been dabbling in Jedi Fallen Order here and there. I actually, I had to like go to story mode because I was just so terrible at the gameplay that I'm just, I'm just getting back used to it again. So the story mode definitely helps me enjoy the, that part. And then I can play through again if I choose on a harder mode and challenge myself. But getting through it once on a easy mode is not bad. <laughs> actually, I need a fucking play Fallen Order. Like I have not even, I, I gave it to my, my brother for christmas he beat it and i want to play it after i just like quarantine man i may as well start it now because i hear all i hear are good things oh, it, from it, it. It's, it's awesome it's it's the type of style of game i like and uh where it brings me back to like force unleashed that was a, a mm -hmm. fantastic game and great storyline and this one's doing a really good job too and um again i haven't gotten through it all but it, it's such a fun gameplay uh, and if you play right, like you can, you can have a really good time with it. Lots it's of hard. exploration, lots to learn. Oh yeah, it, it's really hard. Like I finished it, and it took me a while, and I actually did it in, in hard mode. But like, yeah. it's it's one of the best Star Wars stories I've I've like been able to like witness. It is an yeah. unbelievable Star Wars story on its own. Is there DLC for this, or is it just like the solo game, and that's it? It's a solo. It's just solo, but it, yeah, I think they're working on some stuff. Yeah, but that's crazy about the Xbox, though, man. I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna find the people that are doing this, because like, I don't know, it. It's like that that amount of money, no one's just gonna let that go, and they're gonna find. And, oh. and that, it has to get transferred somehow. And the, it's oh yeah, gonna, like it, it's gonna be a race to see what's gonna happen first. Like if they give the money, and then um, it's a matter of tracking the money, finding the people, and then getting it back. Mm -hmm. But yeah if i was this guy i'd have like a fail safe because obviously like it's so easy like he he has to cover his steps very well in this case like he can mm -hmm. not have any room for error and if like if i was him and i like had that thing of i might get caught i'd be ready to upload it like at any time oh yeah it's a dead man because obviously it's not gonna yeah exactly because you're going to jail you may as well fuck over who's sending you there yeah, which would oh, still yeah. be a dick move. See, at that point, you know, oh, what, yeah. happened, what should happen is that the whole world who would be interested in such a thing just is no longer interested in it. And they say, if you're doing this, then no, we're not going to be a part of it. 
and they collectively do it. I doubt that'll happen, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I, but I definitely do agree with the Pepsi thing that you had said. I don't think that, uh, um, or the, the analogy they use with Coke and Pepsi, I don't think Sony or anybody else is going to do that because it's like, it's the same thing with like yeah. the Marvel and DC shit where it's like everyone was complaining or ev there's a rivalry that only exists with the fans. It doesn't actually exist in real life. And yeah, like the, the fans have it. Sure. But the companies are like, Hey, just keep seeing our movies. We don't give a flying fuck. Oh yeah. But, well, that's all I got. Gents. Mm -hmm. That's it. I have nothing else. I have nothing else for you. You took in everything. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of The F Word, our quarantined episode number two. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. I hope you're enjoying yourselves the best uh, that you can. And um, that's it. We'll see you next week. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at The F Words G. You're following the.f.word.podcast on Instagram, the Lazy Canadian on Instagram. You can email us at thefwordpodcast at gmail.com. You can check out our YouTube channel, The F Word Podcast, on Facebook, The F Word Podcast. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm G. It's your boy, Anthony. <laughs> it's Vass. <laughs> I need to find a line that rhymes like fuck. <laughs> and we're out. Thank you.